My daughter Gemma and I have snuck off for a quick midweek dive. Conditions are absolutely perfect with calm seas and good visibility. You need to prepare properly before you get in the water. Hair must be tucked under your hood, otherwise when among fish, the bubbles can stream from your mask, scaring the fish away. To prevent masks from fogging up, use saliva rubbed all over the glass and then rinse it out. It's a must to be able to see clearly underwater. We are going to target butterfish, otherwise known as green bone. These tasty fish are ideal spearfishing quarry, as they require a good degree of skill to stalk and are common in shallow water, making them the ideal challenge for beginners and experienced sparrows. Gemma carefully loads her gun once in the water. You should never load or fire a spear gun out of the water. It can be very dangerous and wreck your spear gun. This type of reef system and weed are perfect for our target species. The hunt is on. Butterfish use the weed to hide in or under, making for challenging hunting. It pays not to shoot fish that are so close to a rock. It will flatten the end of your spear or even worse, break the tip off. Gemma is using this gutter as cover to sneak up to a small drop off. Snapper love to hang over these type of edges. Nothing home. Gemma has spotted a butterfish. She dives and nails it, but her spear and fish have tangled in the weed. Instead of ripping it free and risk pulling the spear out of the fish, she relaxes then dives to untangle it. This is a nice sized butterfish. They do grow bigger the further south you go in New Zealand. The legal size limit is 35 centimetres. Gemma is going to icky this fish for humane reasons, and predators take a real interest in a distressed fish. Gemma is on the hunt again. A couple more butterfish will make a really nice meal. The terrain she is covering is perfect for all sorts of fish, including some a non-target species like these red moki. This butterfish is well clear of the reef face. This is a perfect place for a shot. Again, Gemma's spear and fish have tangled in the weed. She keeps pressure on the spear line, making sure the flopper stays open on her spear. Otherwise, her fish could get off. Diving is not all about hunter-gathering. There are so many amazing things to see and experience. Gemma has spotted a porcupine fish. They are a harmless, slow-swimming species that rely on their spines, camouflage, and being able to more than double their size by inflating themselves to look like a spiny balloon. You can gently handle them like this without harming them or yourself. They will eventually deflate themselves and swim away.
Like all fish, it is important to clean and ice your catch to keep it in prime eating condition. Whenever you catch a snapper, you need to make sure it's of legal size. There are different sizes for snapper all around the country, so make sure you check your local rules and you're up to date on all the regulations. For Auckland and most of the country, a snapper needs to be 27 centimetres. The best way to deal with a snapper, if you're unsure of the size, measure it. And there's a specific way to do that. What we need you to do, when you're measuring the fish, you need to make sure that you're measuring it to the V in the tail. It's not the pointy bits on the end. If you spread the tail out on your ruler, you'll see there's a clear V in the middle. And that's where you need to be measuring from. Again, make sure you know your size limits for your area. Most parts of the country are 27 centimetres, so you can see this is clearly a legal fish. One of the most important things for boat safety and water safety is the ability to communicate if you get in trouble. Now there are lots of different ways that you can do this. The obvious one is the good old flare. If you have a real drama, let off a flare, everyone will see it in the immediate vicinity. Or if rescue craft are coming over to you, you can let off a smoke flare, they know exactly where you are. The other ways you can communicate a VHF radio. Now a lot of boats have them mounted on board, it also pays to carry a spare handheld, just in case you end up in the tide. Keep it in your pocket, this one's a submersible waterproof one, I wouldn't go diving with it, but it'll, it'll work when it's been wet. The other thing, cell phones. A lot of people think, oh I just need a cell phone because I can communicate. But there are a lot of things that can go wrong with cell phones. The batteries can go flat, they can get wet, and you can sometimes have no service. But there's a few cell phones, this one in particular, that it can actually handle a bit more than most. This one's shock resistant, and I can throw it in the water, and it'll still work. So be aware, being able to communicate is essential for safety. You can't cover every likely scenario that's going to happen, but if you've put a bit of thought and a bit of planning, you're going to get yourself out of trouble. Our fishing was going great when Chris suddenly lost a good fish for no apparent reason. The reason soon became clear as a large kingfish floated to the surface, minus its tail. The Marco shark had no trouble making short work of a good sized kingfish. Well we just had an awesome session on the kingies. Uh, the Marco at the end, you know, it's a shame to see a good fish like that go to a Marco, but I suppose that's the law of the sea, it does happen occasionally. But you know, they're spectacular fish as well. Now we're underway, we're going to troll up to the Alderman Islands, which is about 60 miles north of our current destination. And hopefully along the way we'll encounter some other game fish, hopefully a marlin or a tuna or something along those lines. The conditions are getting, again, better by the minute. All the boys are pretty happy, we've had a few fish on the boat, so the adventure's uh, really shaping up. See what happens next.